working on right now is a bust from Origins. I guess that's how you say it. It's called Sacrifice. Here, we'll make this picture a little bit bigger so you get a sense of what it is that we're going to be working on here. So we're going to do a lot of purples and browns and greens. Figured out with just uh, this official official color scheme kind of is pretty neat. I'll just turn around and get the same angle there. Eh, about the same size. And we're going to use the Pro Acryl paints. And I'll make this reference occasionally bigger just so that we can get a good view of it. I'm going to move my window here and make that just a wee bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to get my let me get my keyboard out of the way here, and we'll see if this is actually working. Paints. We've got some of the regular paints out here, like dark purple. But we also have some of the transparent paints out here. And we're going to point those out here. Let me get, get my brush. Transparent-wise, transparent black, transparent brown, transparent red, orange, yellow. And we got some of the regular paints here. Got a pale green. A magenta, dark purple. I mean, seriously, that's all it is, dark purple. Dark blue, blue black, brown black. They just, you can see, the names are blessedly kept quite simple. We've got, of course, Faded Ultramarine, Faded Plum, the new turquoise colors is uh, definitely one of their newest releases right here. And... Again, this is another one. I just really enjoy this transparent brown. It does a, It's great actually for flesh tones, believe it or not. Now I'm just going to lock a picture in place. We'll start to do some of those initial glazes, or as I refer to as the shaded base coat. Now we're going to take some of our black brown here. This is just water, no medium, just water. We're going to take some of this purple here. And we're going to have a couple of really fun glazes that kind of combine together. We're also, also going to grab a little touch of that bluish gray. So we have a few different washes available to us. And we're just going to get right down into this. And yeah, we are not following within any kind of lines. This is just to get color out onto this as quickly as possible. See, we're going to get some of that purple into there. We're going to do the same over here. If it gets on the face, I don't care, because all we're trying to do is get rid of the primer as fast as possible. I'll show you that primer in a bit, but for now, I just want to get into... There we go. Nice little set of glazing here. We're also going to try and let gravity do its thing. That's why we kind of started up at the top and we're working our way down here. And remember, we're thinking glaze. See what? Got this big old puddle of water here, which is nifty because that puddle of water also has color on it. And we can just drag this right down like so. Like you do. And I'm going to go even more with the bluish gray here. But then back to this purple like we did before. Yeah, how's about some of the brown again? You can see I just sort of go back and forth. Let these guys mix together. Just letting them do their own thing. I know that can be sort of a scary deal for people because they're they're used to exerting probably as much control as they possibly can over their paint. And here it's more like just let it do its own thing. Now I just took some of the transparent black into my brown here, and let's let's do some glazes on the here. And as always, the primer is Badger Steinol Res. This is I think it's called Dull Pink. I never really knew where Ken put the names of the paint on the bottles. For some reason, it's in fine print on the bottom of the back label. 
And for the first time ever, I actually ran across the label. And now I know what that color is called. Because you know me, it's typically the sandy color or maybe the ebony or something like that. We did some a little bit different here. That is this one right here. And yep, down there, dull pink is the name. So let me see what this primer is called. Oh, Light Flesh. All right, well, that's not what I've been calling it. Uh-oh, it is Wicked Elf in the house. Uh, technically, in this, there is a localized solar eclipse. Like, over this house, there, there's a solar eclipse, so it is safe for me to actually try and do this now because the sun has been blotted out, at least in our neighborhood here. Uh, it was uh, actually it was faded ultramarine did that because while well, it is the most powerful paint color it can actually blot out the sun by itself that's how powerful that color is I'd even almost forgot to put it on the palette again and then it put itself on the palette so actually 12 hours ago pretty much less than 12 hours ago I was painting uh, this guy this is from Storm Sunder the Howell family is wondering the same thing. Yeah, that's, uh, well, there was a bit of a time crunch here, and we also wanted to kind of do a thing where Kathy paints, and she's just sort of finishing up her stream, and then I would sort of uh, kind of join in just as she was finishing. Now let's think about some some greens here for those with the stuff on her arm. And we are going to take, there we go. Just gonna make ourselves green. I have no green on the palette. Wait a minute, I do have green on the palette. I got plenty of green. I just made it. Boom, I'm just gonna hit that right here. Again, I don't care if colors combine. Because if you remember what the orc bust looked like when we started on that, that was sort of the unholy mess. There. Just real quick, see, we just let that green combine a bit. And this started out, oh heck, I think this started out even messier. And then he ended up looking like that. Uh, yeah, well, typically, like I said, I was doing one, it, it ended basically 11 and a half hours ago, which even to me is scary. <laughs> Definitely pretty scary even to me. I'm going to take some green. We're going to make ourselves a little bit of a skin tone here. That's something here for skin and boom. Right over the top. Just let that sneak its way in there. Hands. I might even throw a touch of red in places. Oh, and uh, I also wanted to try some blood effects on this because well, I haven't really had a chance to do that on something like a bust, so why not? And I'll show you, I got some other, just some regular miniatures that I've done the blood effects on, so you'll get sort of an idea of what's what's going to happen with the blood effects. Let's see, and all I want to do, we talked about that primer, and what did we do? We tried to wipe it out as quickly as we possibly could. All right, so primer pretty much successfully dealt with I think primer all gone Ooh, one last little one last little glaze here on the dagger which if it's gonna get all those blood effects I'm not gonna really play around with it too much so sponge time sponge as they say in all the doctor shows, sponge. We'll sponge away some of that extra there. Sponge away some of the extra there, and well, all of a sudden, guess what shows up? Some of that primer. Oh, white squirrel in the house. Uh, yeah, I, I wish there was more sleep. Actually, I am not averse to the idea, to the concept. I would not mind if there was much more sleep, but uh, sometimes just reality is reality. 
All right, so once again, I'm just letting some of the underlying primer, so I can still take some of that paint away. Now, typically, what's a, where's the, here we go. This is typically what it's primed, some kind of a light gray like the Oh, Casmania. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, I'm in a, a room right off of that room. I may be about 17 feet away. I got the door closed, so hopefully she doesn't hear me talking or I'm not coming through her. Her headset is way less sensitive than mine for whatever reason because sometimes even if I have the door closed, you can still hear or see on my microphone little sound thing the bars are moving. I mean, so this is a really hypersensitive mic, apparently. All right. And I think now we've got all all the primer all gone. That's good. And you can see right straight away, we already got we got some greens we can work with. We got some purples over here. We got some browns in the hair. There we go. Oh, Jacob Jansen, hello, welcome to the house, and Lamines. Uh, oh, and thanks for the, I'm going to look at my follows here, Screw Fizzle. Oh, he, I think he already went to bed. So, in any case, I always say thanks for the follows. So, while this stuff is just only starting to dry, I'm going to start to think some lighter colors. I'm going to think some uh, faded plum over here. We'll make some of that with our brown, too. And you can see now we've got more of a filbert shape to our brush. Again, that was all of that initial glazing that we did was just to set up things like this, where it's almost like working with oils. You can see there's going to be a little bit of wet in the wet because, hey, I still got wet paint to play with there. Uh, and, and more than dice has now, uh, looks like, successfully rated. Well, you got, you're you going to get a different Wapple. Now, you get double Wapple today. It's like full Wappleville immersion. You had Kathy. Now it, now it gets really dark. Now night falls because I'm here. <laughs> Kathy is the lightness and sunshine, and I am, and I am all the darkness, quite literally, I think, because well, <laughs> that's when I'm usually doing this. Certainly not during this time of day. That horrid bright object in the sky—I don't really know what that's there for. I've heard that humans like need that for whatever, like growing crops and things. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. Look at, look at all this fun little wet blending. My 35 cent craft brush, by the way, which I was using for oils a couple days ago, which was then used for three and a half hours, painting this guy last night. Boom. Yeah, that's from what, Storm Sunder there? Uh, yeah, well, I'm out of gloves. As you could, that's some of the paint from last night that I've actually that's probably paint from the last two days that I've tried to scrub off of there and it ain't coming off. Oh, I used to catch my Facebook lives in England. Uh, well, let's just say that those were starting at around 2:30 ish in the morning, 2 2:30 in the morning, and they well last night's ended closer to six in the morning. That was rough, which is why. If there's some slurred words in this, it's not me being hammered. It's actually just, uh, well, fatigue, like a lot of it. So all of this stuff that you see that looks kind of nice and wet and everything, well, uh, that ain't oils. As much as I love my oils, and I've already used them a couple times on the streams here. Just going. This is just regular acrylics, but big brush, working fast, wet paint. It means I'm able to push this stuff around and let it blend. Like so. You get some really nifty, you know, just throw some paint in here. Let's just take some of this green and 
Then we'll mix them together. And yeah, poof, smooth blend. Uh, why screw around with layer after layer after layer? When you could just do like uh, one, something like that. Just think long, think wrong. Just do it. Take the paint, put the paint there, and don't don't fuss with it. Just put it there, leave it there. Now we're gonna get some a different color gray over here on this side. And you can see it's all still shiny because that paint is all still it's all still wet. Now I'm gonna take some of that. Sea foam green there, mix it in with my purple, and now we'll start to maybe work our way up to a little more of a mid tone on this. I suppose I could do the the texture thing on this, maybe. And we'll see. But I can still I can still blend away. Do, 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 just gonna. Check. Oh, and thanks for the follow, Inky. I appreciate that. Yeah, the the normal time for me is well, what would you say, ten ish in the morning in Europe, supper time in Australia, of course. This is a a very rare supper time in North America version, like super rare. Just working here where I've got some nice opportunities to. Get some broader. And they're not highlights. It's really. I mean, look at how much darker this is than the white. So it looks light because we made sure to really establish the darks. And of course, nothing's complete without some finger painting. Oh, just slap some paint there. And then just start pushing around with our finger. Yeah, that's why our hands are going to look like that. I mean, I could just kind of. Do that too. That would be one way to put texture on there. <laughs> I mean, I haven't filed off my fingerprints yet. I, I might do that at some point. Who knows? But I haven't filed my fingerprints off yet. So when I do something like that, I get texture. I can also do that intentionally, turn it into more of a filbert style brush and do some feathering. Let's get uh, let's get some more green in here. Take some of that transparent yellow there. Get some green into the folds. Instead of just darker purple or whatever in the fold, or dark brown, how about some dark green? Because well, that's just a natural shading color for brown. Something I try to tell folks a lot is that you can really have some fun looking dark especially on something like a bus like this it's well for me it's a lot bigger for some folks this is not one of the larger busts i guess but green in the shadows kind of fun which will then start to blend into some of our purple there and green we'll just get some of this green into our start thinking about green and skin tones here like you do just gonna position some of this oh what the heck we got this got this magenta sitting over here let's do something with that let's do some ah there's my sepia basically some kind of a yellow like sepia some kind of a red and something that's off-white and you can kind of start making skin tone with that So you saw that other tone that we put there, it kind of a greenish look to it. Now, less of a green. A little more like the, I guess, the skin tone you would expect, maybe. I guess some folks, what do they call it, sketching or something, where they start to throw down some of the lighter values and then sort of work backward, work in between them. I, I, I don't know, I don't really think of this as sketching. I had to call it something, so that's why I just called it shaded base coat. 
this area mostly in shadow. We're also going to do some blood effects on this, so why, again, kill myself painting a whole lot of different subtle things, only to cover them up with blood effects later from that dagger. And here we got some reflective light going by default because there's a big puddle of that initial wet wash there. I really wanted to make sure I could get to this while that was still around. Doing the same thing here. So you can see a couple of brush strokes. Face looks very different. So, uh, Luminous says uh, value sketching. Yeah, um, a couple of guys, they that's what they call it. I first came up with that term, what was it, seven years ago? Yeah, seven years, 2013 is when I had to first, I had to call it something. And in 2013, there was no really such thing as sketching and all that kind of stuff. I just had to call it something, and I gave it that name. And it kind of just stuck. It's a little bit different with the busts, say, necessarily, than maybe the the regular figures. And we'll... I got pictures of some of the figures, and you can see how my typical thing is working with units of figures, multiple figures at the same time. This whole one miniature, one bust, one critter, this is unusual. This is really not the norm for me. This is the exception rather than the rule. Let's get to, well, I can't remember the last time I did a figure that had the eyes closed. So that's also going to be interesting. Oh, what the heck. Give me some more of this magenta color here. So it, it's uh, possible that you will hear some ringing, it sounds like ringing of bells in the background. That will be Kathy making herself supper because, well, I already did that before I started doing this. And even, but like I said, this stuff hasn't had any chance to dry yet. And that's that's handy because it lets me get some of this uh, quicky little blending in. And it's not always going to be the case with oils. It will always be the case. That's why I love my oils. But look at this same brush that was not long ago, a nice sharp point, is now turn into what's tantamount to a filbert brush, only softer, which means more floating around my skin tones there. If I take away some of the color, then it becomes more of just a pure, straight-up blending brush. This is something I do with the oils all the time. Well, look at this. You also then, look at that sharp edge that you get, but you also get that broader, flat edge of the brush. Yeah, let's get some lighter tones on the face. Not to say that I can't glaze in lighter tones later, because I can. Now hopefully there's, <clears throat> there's no weird things with the sound, because we actually haven't tried something like this before. And then maybe since she's done with hers, we don't have to worry about some background sounds potentially. But I am going to get something lighter here on a sword blade just to sort of remind myself what a lighter color actually is here. All right, just to get that in there, let's do something really quick here just to indicate some golds. Boom, nothing special, nothing fancy. Sword hilt there. Oh, it, white scroll asks, is the paint on your palette watered down? So the the initial stages of this was just a big old glaze. And you can see some of those, well, I guess some people would say it's more of a wash, but you can see those are still wet. They're still pooled up over here. This wet palette is nothing fancy. It is quite literally Chinese food container. So there's the bottom, which is now the top. And inside the top, which is now the bottom, we got chamois sponge and piece of parchment paper, which we just used this uh, afternoon for baking some taco toes. The creature caster paints, 
they're really not usually they don't necessarily like the wet palette thing but my wet palette is usually not all that wet anyway so it's really not a big deal at all I'm gonna get some brown in here so we've been playing around with the skin tone let's start to bring up some other things like these sleeves that she's got going here remember we wanted a greenish tone so we just made one and I don't know if, I don't think I actually showed the brushes yet so I'll show those in just a second you can see we're just kind of go over some of that pinkish primer that we just had and you can get these these are specifically from Hobby Lobby you can see they're five bucks for 12 brushes that's not the only type there is there's there's others out there I know I've used them myself I was using a big old where's my number 12 that I was using yeah I, ah, here it is so I was using this so I was doing all the initial glaze just like I did on here this was a session like I said from 12 hours ago watch watch this it was a three-hour session and this thing was just basically blank primer when we started and at the end of three hours this is what we had which is why we've been doing this for about 25 minutes and it went from basically primer to this uh, yeah it's I, I control the the amount of I guess the amount of liquid that goes into it basically now of course when you're working with the transparent paints they're gonna flow a little bit differently a little bit more than say something like the the regular creature caster paints now those regular creature caster paints they cover like crazy so when you add just a touch of those to those transparent paints kind of kind of be aware of that because you all of a sudden start to lose vast amounts of that transparency and I know some people think of glazes is just making something darker glazes can be used to make something lighter because this is effectively a glaze this is not me painting a solid layer that is me painting a lighter let's see, even put some of that right look at how transparent that is by comparison it's also again this brush which is nice and soft so you look at a typical kind of spotter brush like this well you're not gonna be able to do what I did with this thing that just that not gonna happen oh Matt games how you doing nice to have you back in the house now we used to use there we go filbert brushes like this but what happens to them that paint gets in the ferrule this gets frayed it gets nasty I much prefer something like this now Remember that number 12 that I was just showing you? So let's do something fun with that. Let's go like this. Here. So look at that nice wide filbert brush, right? But yeah, look how frayed that one is. Look at how sharp that one is. That's a big honking number 12 round. These things, this one was probably five bucks or something like that, and it just got destroyed in no time at all. Oh, let's let's play here. So, uh, yeah, that line right there was made with a number twelve craft brush that costs maybe twenty some odd cents. So yeah, look at those nice thin lines with a big old gigantic craft brush. I still have the Winsor Newton Series 7s, not like I don't have those, but instead of beating those to death, painting the countless figures that I normally paint, what if, and this, <coughs> everything I do is a case of what if, you were to take these less expensive brushes that, this brush right here, not only I've been painting probably 20 hours with this, but it's been in oil paint, it's been in white spirits, it's been in rubbing alcohol. It's been painting pretty much non-stop for the last 48 hours. Yeah, basically non-stop with that one brush. And it's, it 
it's pennies on the dollar, which means that by Windsor Newton Series Sevens and all that, well, guess what? They're going to have a much longer, happier life because they are not getting destroyed the way they otherwise would. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting here these these last couple of days of just stream after stream after stream. It was just a it was a kind of a happenstance of timing. I had already filmed a bunch of videos for the Patreon page, and I thought, well, okay, this is my one chance to do some some live streams here. I think you can start to see now you got the purple looks more purple because of the green over here. I'm going to make my screen even bigger so that I can maybe see it more. I'm also going to bring up my brightness here a bit. There. Oh, now, because we've got somewhat of a value pattern here, we're also going to start doing something like this, where we take away the color so you can see there in the skin, you've got some value, right? Let's do let's do this. Bring back the color, and now you can start to see where some places got a little more green, some places it's a little bit more purple tone. But we've got a long way to go where we can add lighter colors. You're not going to see a whole lot of uh, just white being used. That's not quite how this works. You can see me going back to that filbert style brush again. Like you do. Oh, what the heck. I'm going to throw some green into the hair because that's a natural hair color. Some green there. Let's go back to some skin again. And we'll just, like I said, we'll make our own here. I'm going to actually move this water out of the way so that I have a spot for it. Like I said, transparent brown sometimes can be a very fun skin tone. There's kind of a, got a little bit of pink work in there. So I like to just have a bunch of different tones here that I can access. You can see that there's definitely a healthy amount of liquid in those, I guess. And I'm definitely hoping to get to the the blood effects too. I think that'll be fun. I've done them on miniatures all the time, but I can't recall ever putting those on a bust. And I think the, actually the only the only one of the two of us that did blood effects on a bust would be Kathy on her. Oh gosh, was it the unnameable? It was a vampire bust or something like that. So we're going to start working in some some lighter colors here. But look, I still got some of my original skin tones left. It starts to get a little bit not just lighter, but it's also changing. That, that green that's sort of in the background, that sort of stays behind. And now we're going to just take some of that paint and we'll spray Spread that around, almost like it's oil paint. But see how I left what's there behind? I'm going to do that on this side, too. That's how these things get done faster, because instead of a bazillion layers of either glazing or whatever, it's just we'll, we'll have the underpainting there, and then we'll just work on top of it instead of screwing around. Plus, bigger brush. Bigger brush, working faster, lets you do those wet blends. Otherwise, if, if you just kind of putz around, well, the paint's going to dry. Now, that's another reason why oils is fun, because you can, you can be a little more leisurely. I guess we'll just use that expression. You can be more leisurely in your painting pace when you've got the oils. You don't have to quite rush as much. So again, we're going to just do some nice feathered things here. And so by default, we're starting to get some blending there. 
but then I always move on. I don't just stay in an area. I know a lot of people, oh, Beef in the Hole is back. How you doing? Yeah, well, I think uh, I think you were, we were thinking of almost making, I don't know, some kind of t-shirts or something that said, I survived a 2,400 person raid because that got a little nuts, like a little lot nuts. <laughs> I was just, I still, that that was just, I had no idea what the heck was going on. It just, the chat went crazy. And it scrolled up so fast, I thought, oh, okay, it, maybe it's a raid. But then it just kept scrolling. And I went, maybe this is not a raid, maybe this is me getting hacked by something, I don't know. But whatever it was, it was crazy. I was not expecting that. And apparently, he... He plays video games, but he also likes miniature painting, and he just, every so often, will do that. He'll just raid somebody and surprise the heck out of them. Alright, so we've gotten some of the lighter colors in the face. Why don't we do that over here? And just like the face did, it's going to, over here, it's going to make the cloak back there seem darker. Just going to position a few colors like so. I'm going to grab maybe some pinks over here. Again, doing the whole filbert brush type thing. Like we're moving this paint around. Moving that around, but then I've got some of my original color here. Oh, that guy with a cat. Oh, you're from that, from that raid. Well, thanks for coming back. I just, I tried to keep tra uh, track of what was going on in the chat, and I just, it lost me so fast. Because I think I was also pretty far along on that bust, and we were really getting down into some details. And then all of a sudden, wow, that was pretty, that was interesting. Let's get some lighter stuff here. So now we can, see, we can wet blend here. Just sort of let the paints accumulate enough. Now I'm going to get rid of some of that paint and now just like we would with oils here, we'll just do a little bit of wet into wet blending. And I said oils are fun because you can just do this anytime. You don't have to. There's no issue of timing or anything like that. Here, let's get a touch of this little reflected light on the chin there. You can always do some more, but for now, keep on moving. Do not get don't get locked into just one area. I, know I say it all the time. Oh, thanks a lot, Brush, Brushcraft. Appreciate that. I think I'll get some more of the pink here, too. Now, Kathy had a interesting little screensaver graphic for a computer. That, I think that might be gone now. But it had sort of a Da Vinci type of thing and it had the the face with all of the different areas mapped out. So this area tends to be more of a pink. This area tends to be more of a green just based on where blood vessels are located near or farther away from the surface. Whether or not there's shadows should be there, that sort of thing. And it was interesting where it said some of those should be, that's for sure. Like these patches of green over the eyes and then patches of bright red in places where I wouldn't have really thought there would be, but then when you sort of look at faces and study them or you look at especially old masters or something like that, you'll see they, they kind of followed to that pattern. We'll have to do some lip sounder too, but yeah, it doesn't take long to that was some nice bit of shading. So we're basically 40 minutes into this. And again, started out as just primer, nothing else. However, I'm gonna add I'm gonna add something different here. Let's get some let's get a little bit of orange into this, because I don't want the this to be only Yep. That's what it needed. Even when it's a miniature, I try to make sure I have enough variation in a color 
find something like this, a bust, where it's bigger. And you don't have something like a base to give it that little extra bit of context or story. You, you kind of really have to work at it a bit more. I'm going to shift some of that up here, too. I don't really necessarily know exactly what kind of hair color should be there. I'm just, I'm just playing around here, giving it maybe a little bit more of a orange look. And it's the transparent orange, so all the darker colors underneath will show through. I just kind of took to calling it a dry glaze. I mean, in effect, that's kind of what it is. Let's see if I can get some of that in here. Again, later on, I can play around with that some more. Play around with it more right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's see if I can get some of the orange down here, too. Yes, it's a hair color, but I also want to play with uh, some other things. Like so. Right here on the cloak. Oh, and look, some of that initial wash there, it's still wet. Which means, I gotta, it's almost like it's its own little palette. It's sitting right there. Look, I can just wet blend that. Oh, let's do some more. Again, that's just the transparent orange. Allowing it to mix with the <laughs> kind of whatever glaze is still sitting there for the most part. Dun, dun, dun. Let's do some of that in the folds here, too. Because something I always talk about with cloaks and folds and that sort of thing. Like here, we got actually more of an orange in the fold there. Instead of just a darker green, that's more interesting. It's definitely more interesting. Oh, let's get some of this faded plum into here and a touch of that purple. And we've got this side of the cloak here. Again, bigger brush. Oh, this is another thing, too. I see people doing this. They got this death grip on the brush. Like they're going to snap the thing in half. Chill out on the brush. You can see, look at my hands are way back here. Barely even have my thumb on it. Nice. Gentle brush. It's not a dry brush because look how much paint is on that brush. However, it is a nice, gentle Feathered brush stroke. People have actually caught me sometimes painting, holding the brush like this, and quite literally just doing that. And I was doing that once. It was a uh, one one hundred scale Stug, and someone said, "All right, all right, what are you doing?" And I went, "What?" And they said, "Look at how you're holding that brush." And I was holding it like that, and they thought I was just messing with them. They thought, oh, yeah, Jim's just being cute. He's trying to show something here. He said, no, I needed a softer touch. So that's why I did that. Speaking of softer touch, we're doing it again here. Except now I think I think we're going to grab some of our faded ultramarine and do that. Right here on the shoulder. Boom. Look, I've got my previous color I'm just gonna sit in here which means a little bit of wet blending like you do big old brush now we've got that whole area wetter which means you guessed it more wet blending let's pull this all together here it's almost like we're working with oils. Almost. Not quite. Uh, that, that's why <laughs> sometimes people don't like it when I say that. They say, oh, what about those water-soluble oils? And I said, I've got, I've got dozens of jars of those already. And they go, what do you mean in jars? And I show them the acrylics. And they get, <laughs> they get a little bit perturbed with me when I do that. But... Yeah, 
if I want water soluble oils I'll just use acrylics and if I want oils I use oils especially the oils that I made for myself I'll show you those in a second here and it's back into our cloak and see we went from the face to the stuff on her arms now back to the cloak using these same kind of gentle feathered brush strokes oh I'm gonna go more towards the that's the faded plum right there and yeah, we've got some wet paint out here so wet paint we show wet blend got some of the darker stuff here so again instead of just layer after layer of the same old same old one color on top of the other what if what if you were to blend them like so not nope, beef in the hole says you don't inspire you don't inspire he inspires you ah oh, what was the other one there was another one of those it wasn't uh oh the Oh gosh, it was another kind of t-shirt worthy phrase and that popped up. I think that was in the the big massive raid too. Yeah, there was there was a really fun phrase that I, I just wish I could remember what it was right now. I know there was one that I even I actually came up with one. It was ask not what you can do for your oils, but what your oils can do for you. That one was one of mine. So once again, going to set up some what blends here big brush large surface fair amount of paint equals wet blend I could like I said I could I could even take a sponge quite little and sponge the texture on too there is that possibility there's that possibility as well yeah, let's get uh, some reflected light down in here also. Let's do some here. Let's start to think about this dagger. As much as we're going to do the blood effects and such on there, let's have a little bit more going on now. We're going to take some of the transparent, transparent brown. There we go. We'll just make this a little lighter here. So it's, we're, we're kind of shifting our color of whatever this is around. I, I guess it's sort of like part of the cloak. <laughs> what it also does is take some of our skin colors and shoot some over this way too. Yeah, let's get this a bit brighter as you do. Do I want to go? Yeah. What the heck? We're going to go with some sepia over here and the brown together. Maybe find some more highlights in this and while it's still wet. And look, here, let's make a sharp edge on this, like so. It's a big old giant brush. Just did that little area with it. Oh, God. Well, I'll have to go back and listen to that there, there's so many of them that I have to go back and listen to just to find some of those type of phrases because they're just they're hilarious and I don't want to don't want to lose them although now I have no idea if when you get to the what the heck is that st when you get to affiliate does that mean that your videos or your VODs stay there for longer than two weeks because that would be nice then I wouldn't have to worry about uh Basically, but what I've done is, uh, I know for the Baratheons, I downloaded that one, the raw footage, and then turned it into a video and threw that up on my YouTube channel. So, yeah, you can you can watch the Baratheon Stag Nights, that unit painting thing. I'm going to go actually more with the purple on this, I think. Why not? Yeah. And I can even wet blend, too. And now, silly, we got a nice, uh, see, there's a point on the brush now. Oh, cosplaying kitten is back. How you doing? Yeah, this is a little bit different than than what we did yesterday with the Doe Amroth night. 
So about what? Now, yeah, 12 hours ago, I was working on this guy. There we go. That's about that. We shall put even more. Let's go with the faded plum here. So this one's really fun. I'm looking forward to doing some blood effects on the dagger and on the hands. And this is from Origins. They, yeah, they have a, I guess the Boudica bust or whatever. That might be probably the most well-known. You know what? Actually, I'm going to throw some of this turquoise in here too. Why not? It's, uh, I think it's a fairly large one. And I think these might be the guys that make that. I could be wrong. I want to get some of that on this shoulder too. There. So yeah, and yesterday's stream at this time, uh, we did another one of my Knights of Dull Amroth here. Freehand, non-metallic. I mean, you know, you just, that's what you do during a live stream. A little of this, a little of that. And we're also going to do a little more turquoise here. Bit more of that turquoise. Maybe let some of it get onto the edge of this cloak. Get a little separation from the face until we actually put some of that in the face. Let's start thinking about something on the lips. There's a little darker red, perhaps. There we go. And then we'll go back in and mess around with the teeth. Afterwards, here, let's get a bit of Is that on screen. Yeah. Still getting used to, well, not only OBS, not only Twitch, but I also move things around just in the studio area in general. The monitor's in a different place. So I go to look for where it's been for years, and it, it, it's not there. And I say, ah, okay. Oh, look, we're going to get some of that skin tone now into her robes because yeah, we put green in there before. Let's put some magenta in these robes. It only makes sense. Or maybe just to me. Gives it that little extra. Yeah, see, even if I put that here. Got this big old surface here. So why not? That's about some more there. So yeah. Cosplaying Kitten. You can follow her channel too. Yeah, I do. I would do the shout out thing, but then I have to put this down and be typing in commands, and that's not really something that I'm too good at right now. Uh, maybe if I can get one of those, was it the Delgado Stream Decks or something like that, where maybe I just press a button and that happens, then maybe we start doing those kind of things. But for right now, that's not something that I can do. Especially with the the bust that I have to hold in my hand here. You know what? I'm seeing my turquoise over there. I'm going to throw some of that over here too. I'm going to throw some of that right here. And as we've done before, so I'm just going to pop some of that there. And then I've got some of my existing color. And then we just sort of we backfill a little bit. It starts to... And actually, if I do some stippling here, now the cloak has a bit of texture. And I might just start doing that. So if you see me stippling away at this, there's actually kind of a specific reason. I may be thinking about, that's almost like a little bit of a moonlight effect on that cloak there. But I'm thinking maybe some texture for the cloak. So part of it will be a, a stippling thing to get some blending, but also perhaps... Some stippling, stippling thing for texture, thing, like here, because it's the other fantastic thing that these brushes can do. It just 
there's pretty much no... Oh, it's just a dowel rod. Uh, let's see if I can find you some other things that I've got these stuck on here. Ah, here we go. <laughs> this is how we actually used to paint all of our miniatures, was like this. First we used pin vices, and then we, well, I'm painting hundreds at once, and I said, well, we don't need a hundred pin vices, but a dowel rod will work. We just drill a hole in the dowel rod, stick the paper clip in there, poof, you can just hold it like so. And it's actually kind of nice because I can get my whole hand on here. You can see I can steady my hand like this. And then just go at it. Yeah, the, the dowel rods. We, I kind of wish we had thought of it even sooner, like right away. But fortunately, we just, well, we still have the same set of pin vices. I think we've only gotten one new pin vice in the last several years. It's not like they break. The... The drill bits, oh yeah. Well, actually, we don't break as many drill bits now either. Now that we do the, I've got the jeweler's blocks that you'll that you see in some of my basing videos, especially in the basing videos. Yeah, we're using the turquoise there. That's kind of nice. It almost gives it a bit of a, like I said, kind of a moonlight flavor there. Instead of it just being, like I said, a lighter green or a lighter brown. We got some purples in there. Now we're starting to get our turquoise. Just cause. That was not the original intent whatsoever here, but it just sort of uh, seemed like a good idea. So I'll just kind of double down on that. Yeah, it really is. It's a bargain basement way to do it now. Once I started doing the oils and other things, that kind of changed the paradigm because now I paint way more of the figures when they're stuck on their bases already. There are times, some of them I don't, so here, uh, this guy. So this is one of my current army painting series. He's just pinned on there for right now because I needed to get it all the stuff back here. And it's way easier to just take him off of there instead of trying to paint around the tree branch that's there. Now as far as blood effects go, I brought out a couple of these. Here they are. So this is the kind of thing that I want to try and do on that, on her sword and on her too. So we've got some blood dripping down on him. So we're going to see if we can do that on her dagger also. Yeah, hopefully it works. There's never any guarantees. The only guarantee is there are no guarantees. So I just took a little bit of the that sea foam green, added it to my turquoise here. Oh, cosplay kitten says I got some D and D ones already glued to the bases. Yeah. Well, once I started priming especially with the airbrush and stuff, then I could just get at different areas. And then when I started working with the oils, as I'm just going to take my finger here and push this around, then I could get at those areas because with the capillary action of the oils, I could get at the undersides of the miniatures. I also started to realize that, okay, I've got like those gray knights that are on pins that, that you saw, those terminators. I was I started painting a whole bunch of stuff that never well I don't want to say it never should have been painted but I'm putting details and lights and darks where there just didn't need to be any because you can't see it it's like invisible so I basically wasted a whole bunch of time uh, for nothing and that that's when I started to not use the the pins like that anymore and I just started to paint them on their bases and that's basically stopped that kind of insatiable urge to just sort of paint everything and put lights and shadows everywhere in a place that mostly is just supposed to be shadow. So yeah, let's see, look, we're going to find some texture here, but look, we got some green over here. We got some of the kind of a magenta over there. Oh, 
yeah, let's get some more of that over here. So like I said, it's almost kind of a moonlight effect back there. What the heck, I'm going to just throw a couple little hits of that here too. Now let's play around with that, that sword blade a bit here. So we got that turquoise. We already have a lot of stuff in place, so I can just kind of build off of that. Again, not going to do too much here because the more intricate this is, the harder it's going to be to get those blood effects to show up. And we really want those to show up. This is going to be an odd figure here because there's actually no eyes to paint. I, I, I just seriously cannot remember a time where I had a figure where there were no eyes to paint. That's just wild. Now, anytime I had to paint one of these squiggly sword blades, all I can think about is that unit of Empire Great Swords, and they all had those squiggly swords. And I'm trying to do the, the Sky Earth non-metallic metal. I'm basically 20 stupid squiggly swords. I do believe on the blog post I mentioned something about that. Oh, yeah, and there's links to my blog. Well, actually, there's links to everything. Blog, Facebook page, or, yeah, Facebook page, uh, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Patreon page. You want pictures of finished stuff? Well, best place to check that out. Probably on Instagram. Also on the blog. Let's see if we can start to lighten this up a bit more. And it's along this, this central axis right here. Not so much on the individual little scallops. Oh, yeah. Not sure how that word popped into my head, but I guess that's kind of what you would call it. Sort of, maybe. Let's get some. Like I said, it just takes a tiny bit of some of those whites or the lighter colors to make your color very much cover. So uh, just the tiniest bit of the off-white added. I think it's bright ivory is what that is. And all of a sudden, that transparent yellow, not quite so transparent anymore, which is, uh, I mean, it's nice. It's neat. Yeah, let's get the transparent brown in here. I might, I'm going to have to eventually start going back in with some darks as well. But we're just sticking with our, sticking with Mr. 20 Cent Craft Brush as long as we can. Because, well, why not? Oh, beef and oils are not professional enough to assemble my miniatures after painting them. I always paint them glued to the base. There's also, when, when you think about it, that whole assembling afterwards because we used to do that all the time and sometimes that could just be a major hassle you would end up screwing up things trying to assemble stuff getting glue on stuff there was also another thing too if you're especially if you're doing sky earth or any sort of lighting effect there's always that possibility that you are holding that piece wrong and you basically lit it the wrong way because you you didn't have it on the piece itself and it doesn't it's not like you lit it from upside down or something crazy like that but it doesn't take much to all of a sudden where people look at that and say that lighting looks a little skewed what happened there and then then you're sad then then it's sad face time and we don't want sad face. Painting sad face usually ends up meaning less painting. I don't know how many people I know that have pretty much given up on painting. Now, I don't know if some of the current circumstances have made them revisit painting again. But part of it was they got bored. They just... They flat out got bored. It wasn't like they couldn't do it or didn't feel like they could do it. They got bored because 
they'd been painting the same way potentially for years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever. I am paint miniatures for 20 years now. I don't paint the same way I, I do today than I did last week. Uh, it is that level of constant change. Oh, wait, oh, it's beef in the holes that try to limit the chances of a beef nerd rage. I've seen some rages. Speaking of reflected light, let's do that here. So that's actually some of my like a brown right there. Almost thinking of a bit of reflecting of whatever the ground is. Yeah, see that? Just one extra little color there. Now, like I said, I don't want to go too nuts with this because if we are going to put blood effects over that, well, the busier that sword blade gets, the more competition the blood effects have. And then you end up just kind of, one has to kind of take precedence over the other. And I'm thinking it's going to have to be the blood effects, but that could all change when we do it. Like I said, I have no idea what to expect. But you just, you have to change. You can't just keep doing the same thing for years and years and expect not to be bored out of your mind. You just, you can't, you have to switch things up. And I know that's scary. That is real scary to some folks. But I just, all I can do is point out examples of so many people that I know. You know, cosplaying kids, I picked up new techniques. Not as crazy as, yeah, it's... Part of it is necessity, right, is the mother of invention. And it's just, well, there's 17 bolt-action armies to paint with vehicles. Learn how to do all that stuff, well, now. Then there's the Lord of the Rings terrain. It's, well, you've never painted 3D printed terrain like this before. Figure out something now. <laughs> That's really not the average person. That we can just start again. This is the same brush that has seen hour after hour after hour, and now we're just sort of gently painting away at her face. Starting to get some, again, not total highlights yet. We're just starting to build, building. Gosh, is it weird with the eyes being closed? I'm just so not used to that. Let's take away a little bit of that extra paint there. Jeez, I suppose if you well, if you did a one-to-one -one scale bust, you would have to paint like this with the the, the stippling because you'd have to paint in all the the pores in the skin. Actually, now that I come to think about it, I also need to think about the skin here and not getting too much detail on that because it seems like the well at least in the, the example picture there that I want to try and follow that has a lot of even blood on the hands there let's get a little bit more of this pink so, uh, guy with that cat here's an echo I nobody's mentioned an echo so far and I think I've got everything pretty much turned off. I know I got everything turned off as far as mics and that sort of stuff goes. I know yesterday there was one person that had something weird with their sound, but everyone else said that that was, that was fine. Now I will just check something here real quick. Okay, how is that? So tell me if that's any better. So apparently there was two of me open. So just let me know if that takes, uh, did that take care of it? Okay, that's what it was. Basically, well, I was hosting Kathy and I think what happened is that hosting thing when she stopped turned to me. So. Thanks for that. 
Oh, I also only have one monitor set up here because this my setup is designed for recording videos. It's when I would do the YouTube lives, there's not all of the chat things. There's basically people can write messages in a chat and that's about it. There's not really a whole lot of other fireworks that go off and everything else. So that's you'll have to definitely forgive me if there's not the the usual bells and whistles that you're used to in a typical Twitch stream because well I still haven't even done 10 of these yet. Well, let's see what I can do. I, mean, I could just kill this one too and then let me know what happens. All right, so that one's gone. And just let me know if that makes any difference. Uh, well, it's uh, part of it is it's the, the YouTube channel and all of the Facebooks and the Instagram stuff because <clears throat> just like I did with YouTube, I spent many hours listening to tutorials about Twitch, just people saying, look, here's the do's, here's the don'ts, the etiquette, that sort of thing. And one of the things that was said over and over again is that you need to also have a YouTube channel. You also need to have your Instagram thing. You also need to have a big Facebook presence. Twitch on its own, uh, unless you're just a magic person that can summon people, <laughs> that literally just summon people to your stream somehow, like a Pied Piper, you're going to need to use all those platforms combined. And while I've only done, well, let's put it this way, I've been... I've been doing stuff on YouTube for as many years as I've done streams on Twitch. So I think it was about 2012 when I first started doing stuff on YouTube. So that might explain it too. And I kind of stayed away from Twitch just because, well, there wasn't a lot of the discoverability like you have on YouTube. Now, oh, Baby Monster. I started painting minis recently with a Song of Ice and Fire. Need to learn a lot more about highlights. Well, I've got some Song of Ice and Fire. Actually, there's a bunch of those on my YouTube channel. That's uh, something you can check out. But here, let's look at uh, Poof. So Song of Ice and Fire highlights. Halberds. Look at all the, the your sky right there. It's about reflections. And sometimes the highlights need to be set up by your shadows. So again, another view on the halberds. You can see you got the bright highlights positioned next to the darkest darks. So again, boom. Oh, let's go back to my original here. Poof. And there she is. So we've been at this uh, round about an hour. And this thing went from primer to all of these fun things. You know what? Let's. We've been working with a big old brush for a while. Oh, let's see if we can't find ourselves a smaller one here. There we go. So here's our smaller brush at last. Yes, Jim does use smaller brushes. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, and cosplaying kitten. Just got Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, I just, oh, gosh. It must have been like in the last month that you did that. Actually, no, maybe in the last three weeks. Because I think I only just remember seeing that maybe three weeks ago or so. So, yeah, we can use smaller brushes. It's not like it's only the big ones. But now you can see why this brush doesn't get the snot beat out of it because we did most of this thing with the insanely big brush. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some other, I got some other, some Lord of the Rings stuff up there too. Now, the, <laughs> actually, well, Cosplaying Kitten knows that when I did the last daylight stream, I guess we'll call them just daylight streams, I had no idea 
that when I showed those pictures, there was no mic attached to it. So nobody could hear anything that I was saying. And I had a whole thing. And now it made sense why nobody knew what the heck I was talking about. Because there was no sound when I went to those pictures. So that that was not fun. <laughs> I was not happy when I someone told me, yeah, there was no sound there. We just thought that was supposed to be that way. And I went, no, that was not supposed to be that way. Yeah, let's, let's give her some eyebrows here, too. Because why not? There actually is a one little lock of hair crosses over the face. I'll just put that there for now. And I'm also going to think about a little bit of a darker glaze because it's we've been working lighter 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 I'd like to work actually both ways I'll actually start to work a little darker now especially with mr. small brush out here we'll just we'll just call him Windsor so now that Windsor is out <laughs> we just put away crafty for the time being and now Windsor is out Win Windsor only comes out towards the end. He's he's shy. He's not quite as brave and tough as Crafty. Well, the other difference too with that I was hoping this is the one thing I was hoping for Twitch. Now, YouTube videos are really not designed for long view duration. It's just that's not what they do well. But I thought at least that was my impression was that. Twitch was for people that were actually going to stay and watch for a while, like for hours potentially. And at least so far, at least according to the analytics, that's it. Posh, well, posh means pinky up. We have to paint with our pinky up if we're painting with uh, Mr. Windsor here. Pinky up. Oh, what? I'm going to do another little glaze there on the hair. Why not? Why not? And then let's uh, go with some red, maybe a touch of that purple. Let's see what we can do here. And sharpen this up. There we go. I think, because you always try and give expression to the face especially with something like a buster let's see if I can't get a bit more of a light there almost yeah I'm gonna do it on this side too in the corner of the mouth here very light almost imperceptible and then we're gonna do some more reflected light here So we let we let the big brush do a lot of that bulk work there and now now we can have some fun here I think I think I want to get some some kind of faded ultramarine turquoise something going on in these shadows here don't want it to necessarily be eye shadow but just something more than browns and pinks there we go and then we'll work it back in got my lighter color here oh let's see yeah people stay for hours in streams oh you're welcome baby monster oh and thanks for the follow too and plin travails and nagrizi uh and deck knight I think we got caught up on those. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, I'll figure out how to, ha how to have some kind of notification for follows and, and that sort of thing. But they have to be notifications that don't just show up in the middle of the screen. Because that would just be irritating for me. <laughs> I think it would be irritating for everybody else if all of a sudden I'm in the middle of doing this. And then boom, an alert or something like or a chat thing or whatever some kind of graphic just pops up right over the top of it that would that's not something I want to see 
and that's why there's no music. Oh, I'm currently painting while watching. I was actually I had I think I had Drax last night out before I was gonna do my late night thing and I was just exercising while that was on since ESPN has absolutely nothing to listen to on the radio at that time of night. So I just now well Eve Kathy's been doing it too. She's been watching a lot of people doing role playing and such. I think Pyro Club, yeah, Pyro Club, she's been watching them. Should be watching that again on Friday. I didn't even know people did that stuff until very, very recently. I, like I said, I've been really focused on the YouTube stuff and everything else for a, quite a long time. I think it's in trying to get a little separation that hair from rest of the skin. Gonna get some some of those oranges in there too. Oh, the the famous stretch band routine. Well, I the iron literally that I wear a set of twenty pound iron bar weights on my hands that I've used for a long time like 25 years or something like that and they quite literally sound like iron shackles <laughs> it's like a prison exercise routine or something like that because well I had to do that because since I paint basically 18 hours a day 20 hours a day you get kind of hunched over doing that and to try and compensate for always being hunched over, I try and do those some running, some stretching exercises. And just to add a little extra tension to it, I use these weights. And when they hit the ground, they, they make this clanking sound because they are literally five iron bars that are two pounds each. Ah, oh, Jacob was just playing. Yep, yeah, she was in there. Heckling us now, did she, uh, what are the hinders, right? That's what you can get. Now, can you, there are only so many hinders and helps can be used on a given role. So I always wondered, well, can the DM use a hinder to compensate for your help or something like that? Because I'm not, I see those up on the screen, but I'm not quite sure how they work. Because I don't know if I've, well, I have a, I'm just assuming that not all of the hinders are used because I'll see a stack of hinders up there, like 30 of them. And I'll say, oh my gosh, these days, there's no way they're going to survive this if those hinders get used. So I wasn't sure if there was some kind of, I don't know, etiquette around using the the hinders to make things that much worse for the party. Uh, that's not my first night playing with those. Yeah, the, I've got a, well, I know Kathy tells me, and then sometimes I just forget, or they seem to be, uh, I'll try and watch how they're being used, and it seems to be a little bit different on certain ones. And then it seems like sometimes the same person is in the same stream buying helps and hinders. Now I'm going to just double down here with a few of these lighter turga and I'm, I'm really seriously thinking about making that more textured. So that's another thing that we'll do here is try and get some texture on this. This needs some more here too, but not quite so... Not uh, quite so light. But as I make it lighter, so I can get a little more texture in there. So doing some of that stippling. Yeah, this needed it to maybe even fade it a bit with my finger. Now, if we make the DM mad, he would probably use them all well. Vengeful DMs, 
there is such a thing. I just remember that was the t-shirt the design of what there was that grumpy cat and he was sitting in front of a GM screen or whatever and it the, the little saying says rocks fall everybody dies good something like that I seem to remember that little t-shirt type scene all right let's uh Oh, we've got this. What about this shoulder here? Because we've done all this stuff over here with some kind of de facto moonlight. I've got to think about, do I do this over here? However, I think I'll let a little bit of the faded ultramarine work its way in there. Oh, we had a Oberthur Studio. We had a DM that would make or shake imaginary dice. And say, when you do stop getting... Ah, uh, yeah, well, there was... Uh, what would we call them? Hanging, hanging. G well, we call them hanging commissioners in Blood Bowl, but there were definitely some bloodthirsty GMs or GMs that would get really irritating when people were doing maybe a lot of out of character stuff without the the book over the head. I don't know if that's still a thing to say. Oh, I got my book on my head, so that means I can be out of character here. I have not done too much in the way of RPG, actually. I did a tiny bit of D&D. &D. Mostly it was Deadlands. That was my favorite because the, the theme was American Civil War. And, and that I could, since it was a historic, basically kind of based on a historical thing, that I could get into and do stuff with. The, the typical D&D, &D, it was tougher to do that. If it, uh, even if it was, say, like a Babylon 5 RPG, even the Inquisitor RPG for basically 40K, I could get into that because, well, we had an Inquisitor retinue. That was a lot of fun. You know, let's get some lighter lights on that dagger. Right, yeah. Focusing on that center line, however, it's not a complete line. Got to break that up. And then as I you know, do a couple more of these here. And then let's shift back over to... Oh, yeah, the Deadlands game. I loved that. Oh, that's it. And thanks for Ark the Last. I think I got might have gotten that follow already. But I'm looking for here. Going to go back to my Hallbirds again. So you can see on the weapons there, on their actual halberds, you can see we've got even the horizon line is reflected there. You see the sky is reflected there. I know people are always saying they have a, such a tough time with non-metallic metals, but really the figure tells you what goes where. Because anything pointed towards ground is going to be, well, ground color. You see the red that they're wearing? Well, you got to reflect that red as well. Now here we don't have to worry about that so much. Now these guys didn't really have much in the way of metal. But we had some of the same colors, some of the same purples and such. Here, let's get to the calf here. So this is it. see the on that white horse on the left. Each of these horses, a, just a different type of primary color scheme. The brown on the the second one to the left, kind of in the middle there. That's got some blues in the shadows. And that's what we've been doing here. We got the greens in the shadows over here. We're going to do some more of that. How's about we're just going to take some of this dark, really dark green here, like insanely dark green. Because if we're going to do this texture stuff in the lights, let's do some of that with the darks now. It's not going to show up as much, but it'll it'll be there. So again, some green in those shadows. Let's see, we'll get this to turn. But now, hints of texture in that cloak. More hints of texture. More texture. More shadow. More texture. More shadow. So it's another way to 
But let's just say that maybe you don't like the way things are blending. You just, oh man, no matter what I do, I can't get this to blend smoothly. Well, then you say the heck with it. Let's just put a texture on it. Let's just texturize the heck out of this thing. And that's what we're doing now. It doesn't take a whole bunch to get that nifty little texture to show up there. Yeah, I do. I, I did enjoy the Deadlands. I, just the whole thing, I could really get into that. I could just kind of even do the accents and everything else. That was just a blast. And I think the last D&D &D character I tried to play was, oh yeah, <laughs> It was Randall Snodgrass, the bluegrass bard, with a plus one mastercrafted washboard. That's right. And he used to have sayings, too. Now, we've done the darker green. I'm going to go to this uh, sort of a magenta-ish type thing here. I mean, it's really a grayed down magenta. But texture time, like that. Because it's neat to have the, the smooth cloak. And you saw how we were able to do the smooth blends early on with just taking the the brush going wet into wet. But now we can, we can play a little bit more here with some, some texture on this. There we are. I'm also going to think about, let's see if there's any place in the yield skin tones that could use some uh, as much as I'd like to get that here I'll just throw that it's probably gonna get covered up with blood effects anyway so but it's there now definitely will leave that oh you are what you wear by the way so if you're wearing a black shirt doesn't matter whether you're male or female five years old or 50 years old you will have five o'clock shadow that will reflect onto your face and if you wear a lime green shirt, well, I <laughs> guess you're a, you're a skittle now. Because all of that stuff is going to reflect on your face. Anytime I would ever do a painting class that involves skin tone, and I would talk about that, immediately everybody in the room would, in a panic, look and see what kind of color the clothes they were wearing. And some of them would have that look on their face like, uh-oh. Because they were wearing like a lime green shirt or a bright orange shirt or something like that. And it's like, yeah, you look like you've just been irradiated in a nuclear accident. Congratulations on your orange shirt. And I'm not quite sure some of those folks ever wear orange or bright green again. Because maybe they didn't want to look like a pumpkin. So if we've got all this dark gray next to her skin. Well, guess what? Some of that needs to be reflected on that skin. <laughs> physics are physics, and physics governs everything, including light. Speaking of light, I'm going to get some of that. There, some magenta here too. We got that green working, but now I'm going to try and get a little hint of some magenta in the skin tone here. Some of it up here. All right, we've messed with the skin tone. We're going to go back to some of the these things on our arm here. I'm going to see what kind of lighter tones, if any, we put here. Also trying to think of, well, I need to actually get a little bit of turquoise on here, because if we're going to do that all back here, we need to get some of that here too. And I do believe that, ah, that's the place to do it. There we go. And it's almost going to form I don't want this to look like it's metal as far as having a light, dark light, but get a little bit more of my green over here. 
And hopefully this starts to make sense what's happening. There we go. That's what we needed. I'm basically going to let this elbow pick up some of that turquoise light. That's what. Now here it can be warmer because it's essentially in shadow from the from the arm there. But here on the elbow, I want that to pick up more of the turquoise. Ah, that's it. Plus it makes it just look more interesting. Ah, that's it. I, I knew. I just had to do something different over there. Got to start thinking shadow. Okay, so this. Any sort of if there is moonlight or whatever that's coming down on this, it gets it starts to get blocked there by the actual cloak or whatever she's wearing. Uh, Deadlands approach really immersed you into the setting. Yo, oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I th I sort of enjoyed the fact that it was you had the successes right, and then oh, then there was the playing cards that were part of it. And I do believe, well, and two, that I think another thing I enjoyed is basically in that game, if you got shot, you just died. There wasn't the the barbarian who is fighting away with his 3,000 hit points while a cleric has a wand of healing kind of uh, thermometered in a certain orifice, feeding him more hit points. <laughs> so there was that too. But thank you very much, and oh, thank you for the follow, uh, Sibstorm. I'll just pronounce it that way. I'm, Kathy says that I should just look at names and just go, I'm going to pronounce them that way, instead of agonizing over pronunciations. Or just make up your own nicknames for them, because that's what she does. Now here, I'm going to soften a couple of these transitions here. As much as it, it's neat to have the sharp ones, I'm just softening some of those. And it just took a couple of brush strokes to do that. A couple of brush strokes, boom, that's it. Also thinking about on the knuckles right here. A couple of brighter, yeah. Now I said, what effect, if I put the blood on those things, will it cover some of that? It just, it might. We also need to get these teeth a little bit lighter. Not so bright that it's like a toothpaste commercial for Crest or something like that. But just a hint. And there I'm actually putting a little more of the light color there on the right on the eyelids and eyebrows really more focused on expression at that point than any other specific kind of uh fact, let's get the, the dark red here yeah so now we've got some nice contrast working with the Lips. I'm even going to throw some of that up into the hair. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's like a, some kind of a string or whatever. This gold needs some more of something. And for now, I'm going to play around with some orange and green. Ah, good. It's on screen. Yeah, I'm still getting used to where I repositioned everything. And now, because gold's supposed to be reflective, let's reflect maybe a little bit of the moonlight stuff there. Just cause. Soften an edge there. I'll take some of my sea foam green, and maybe even. Oh, you can pronounce my name any way you like. There, oh my goodness. Now, I think it's maybe, th this is another thing I was hoping there would be a little less of with Twitch. There, there was somebody that, when I first was working with the contrast paints, I'd, I had no idea how they were going to work, so I was using them for the very first time. 
and this is a person that hadn't used any GW stuff in a long time, hadn't even really painted outside of Lord of the Rings, even GW figures in years. And there was the dreaded Fire Slayer flesh, which when I looked at the jar just out of the corner of my eye, it looked like it said Fry Slayer. I'm like, what the heck is a Fry Slayer? Well, again, I didn't realize that Fire Slayers are the new Troll Slayers. You know, just because somebody wanted to copyright something. Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to get some texture over here. So, yeah, for, and someone actually was upset. They, they said, well, for three hours, you, you pronounced it Fry Slayer. And I said, well, okay. The whole thing was supposed to be a tutorial and what you could do with that. Yet you seem to be really focused on the name a lot. It's like it's vitally important to your health and well-being that someone pronounces that name exactly the way it should be. And then, of course, folks said you should just pronounce it that way from now on just to, uh, just to tweak people a bit. I haven't even used those in quite a while. And I get some more of that purple over here, too. So let's just see what we've got going here. And we're also going to do our little black and white trick. So, zoink. Now it's black and white. So, yeah, we can still see our texture. We can see some reasonable shade. So this is something that I've been advocating here. Take your Take your cell phone take a picture everybody's got some kind of editing software on their phones kill all the saturation make it black and white and you've basically done a nice little self critique of yourself because you will now know whether or not you got the contrast you need you will know immediately oh cat uh someone says well now, it was at about 2-something o'clock. Actually, no, it was somebody that watched it after the fact. That's right. So I guess that's the other difference, too, with I don't know just how much, say, post-stream views you typically get on a certain thing. Yeah, it's all This is all new to me. I have no idea what's going on. But I am just going to have fun with my uh, stuff here. I'm just going to keep on painting. Because, well, that's what I do. Here, let's give her some kind of a fingernail there, too, while I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to get some of these darker greens in here. Maybe a touch of texture. Yeah. Like you do. And then we'll think about some of this purple in here. Oh, good. You can see it. There's even, yeah, look at this, uh, some of the green is there. I can do a little wet blending. With a little more. That was just an isolated little dot there, so now I'm going to play connect the dots with more dots. Dots for dots. Now I'm going to do some reflected light on this. That is another thing that's missing. And we're going to, that's going to have to be warmer. So here's some, what I hope will be some warmer green here. And it is. And there's my reflected light. It needed some of that. And here too, which actually, ooh, I have to actually make that a little bit more of a skin color, believe it or not, because well, it's sort of reflecting the light of the skin that's bouncing off of that. It's like an infinity mirror thing, where it's just constantly bouncing light around. Uh, let's go... I'm going to see if I can't get some few lighter highlights right here on the arm like you do a 
like that. Yeah, that's that's oh yeah, that's fun. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but now I'm gonna take the the turquoise and some of my I almost called it mint green because that would be the Reaper equivalent of it. And now there we go. So in the other one, the the highlight color slightly differently because we're not trying to get that sort of almost moonlight effect there, but we are trying to get some of that here. Even thinking about that on her hands. And I'm even going to get a little bit of that see on her nose here. Getting a hint of that bluish light even on her nose. Even a hint of it on her eyelids. Now I've got to be careful we don't want to end up with the 5 o'clock shadow thing because that's no good. But we we now have a few hints, few hints of our highlights there. So like it's an hour and forty seven minutes in, and this start out is just bare primer. There was no paint on this. Go ahead and rewatch from the beginning, and you'll see what this looked like less than two hours ago. And if you want to see other pictures of finished things, like the I just put up on my Instagram account, the pictures of the last bust I painted a couple of days ago. Where did you go? You're around here somewhere. Uh, there you are. So this is the one we did a couple days ago. And this was about three hours or so. Oh, Max Styles painting. Oh, thank you very much. Oh my gosh, look how much bigger that is. Yar! Get away. Puppet free puppet shows. Yes. You didn't think you were gonna get a puppet show on this. It, it's free puppet show bust theater. I was about some more of this light. Yeah, it's been uh, I know on the YouTube channel I've got some of the black heart models busts. Painted. I gotta do actually some pictures of those to to post here. Like I showed you guys the other ones from the from army painting series and such. But those are fun. The the I've got a rain of fire dragon that I'll be painting. Is I'm so focused on the mini well for a variety of reasons. A it's kind of what I do for a living. It's also what I mostly record as far as videos go. But well can't play too many games of Lord of the Rings or Bolt Action without miniatures, so I'm always painting those a lot. So for me, something uh, bust like this, this is a nice little treat here that I only get to do every so often. I think I got a couple little dots there. Starts to indicate some texture. Remember we were doing the stuff with the magenta on the hood here? Uh, let, let's play with some of that now again right in here all right bam so that that's the same magenta we were using on the face now that's going on to the cloak here gives us texture gives us more color i used to always say when i was doing all the the vehicles and stuff for bolt action and everything else i used to say that weathering is like a chess match Painting vehicles is like a chess match. You got to think moves in advance. And with this, I was thinking a few moves in advance. I, I thought, well, what happens if I do want to put some texture on this? Because everything is texture, right? Even on miniatures. I've seen tiny little, obviously, 28 millimeter figures with texture in the robes that was so heavy <laughs> that it's like they used, I don't know, mountain climbing rope to sew these things so uh, think about that think about scale it's like yeah you you want to show the effect and we all sometimes exaggerate things to maybe show an effect but just give it a thought do I really need to put this much texture in because I have seen more texture than this 
quite literally painted on 28 millimeter figures where the figure is barely the size of the head of this bust and it's not the biggest bust in the world either is not the biggest bust in the world a couple of more little dots here again let's throw some here so we got the we got magenta against green we got turquoise in here just a host of different colors and tones really fun Oh, we need some right here because I, I positioned some of the dark green little dots and now yeah with some of those right in here is going to be fun right next to that darker green but I'm going to cover up absolute oh fry slayers get all the fish at Friday fish fries say that pff, I could barely say that once fast say it ten times fast some naughty things might might come out there Although I guess that is another difference between Twitch and YouTube. I've certainly heard more colorful metaphors on Twitch broadcasts than I have on YouTube. There we go. I also have to get some of my Artisan Guild figures going on. I got a bunch that are prepped and ready to go. What was the this is one of the last ones that I did right here. This was very fun. And you can see see in the, the shadow areas there how you've got like a purple. But in the lighter areas it, it's that warmer red. So we're gonna do the let's do the killing of the let's make it black and white. So you can see, yeah, we take away the red, we still have lights and shadows but when you bring back the red you can see that the blue that's there in the shadows again on the wings the the red is not just the same dead color of red right gonna get me something to drink here real quick ah sorry about that it's been a few hours and I needed something to drink I'm going to throw in a little bit of texture right here. Because this is actually be catching some light. Now that I look at it, it's just like the, the metal, right, that tells you where a color needs to go. Well, here, this is pointing up towards that, well, the sky, basically. If it's going to do that, well, then I darn well better get some sky color. And the sky color in this case just happens to be some kind of moonlight turquoise. I'm going to do some of this here. So it's a little bit of the transparent yellow mixed with the off-white. I'll just pick up a few lights in the hair. Because we're starting to get a lot of depth and shading in other places. I want to make sure I continue that here too on the hair as well. Now a lot of my lights are, they're not at full power. I don't even have my bright magnifier light on. For a few reasons, it tends to burn out the figure. But it's one that I need to be able to really complete what I'm doing. I need to have that light on. So that one is not on. It makes a big difference for me. I've tried using some of my nicer magnifier lights, but then I get the gray bars of death with my camera. So sadly, no, no fancy magnifier light. I just got to use my old... I mean, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily, but here, let's get some darker green again onto the arm here. It's now that we can always keep adding lighter colors, but you know, actually, I'm thinking maybe I won't do the blood effects as much as I'd like to. Maybe I won't do that. At least not yet. Yeah, maybe at another point I'll do that. Now 
this. I need to do something here. I think I need... Yeah. Okay. I just needed to go darker. I kept going lighter and lighter. Well, what I really needed to do was this. There we go. Do as you say, not as you do. <laughs> so that, that helps. That helps a lot. I'm going to go back to some of the skin tones over here on the side. How much more light do I bring into this? Do I bring in a little bit more of the sort of a faded pink in here too? I will let that wet blend. It's uh, something that we did early on, remember that. So I've got this yellow over here, so that's going to keep my skin tone from getting too pale. Keeps that from getting too pale. We still we have our greens that are intact, which is good. All that green that's right in there, all from the very early stages. Speaking of which, we're going to take our turquoise here and Gonna try and get a bright, yeah, right here on the elbow. That's good. And that's also gonna work its way up here, like so. Bit more here. Let's get a, some of my original green as well. Uh, yep, okay, that helped. Now what do I want to do here? Because this does this, this doesn't have a whole lot going on. I'm gonna see what I can do with some that's just my purple there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, this is gonna be a fun there's already purple in so many other places, but this is a new basically more of a grayed down purple, because these don't have a lot of action going on. While they aren't main primary elements, they still need some kind of a color. See, it's not going to affect it terribly much. And then it almost becomes another type of gray. Oh, oh cosplaying kitten, I really want to bug you for a lesson in person sometime. Actually, what just with the way things are, well, I was supposed to do all those Adepticon classes, right? And, and people have asked me if they could just do like Google Hangout classes. I do Google Hangout meetings all the time, so I'm used to it. And Google Hangout works fantastic when you just got two people. You can do whatever, and that's a possibility. I've been there. People, so many people have asked because, well, conventions not really looking like they're on the cards at all this year. So I I was definitely thinking about some kind of should they be two hours like a typical class? I would prefer them be that long. I think the real problem is just the scheduling for people. Which, well, I guess that's easier now <laughs> for some folks. Because their schedules opened up a bit, or at least some of their options. So it's definitely something I want to try and do because, well, I mean, it would sort of be like this. Right, but then, I mean, would you want to be painting? Well, I think you're kind of done with your nids, right? Uh, is, do you have a new? Oh no, do you have a new AOS project going on? I could swear. Uh, you, well, you were doing your elves, right? Yeah. Actually, I would love to have some of the new high elves or whatever. So I know there's some folks that, well, now they're they're doing the homeschooling thing with their kids, so they they almost find out that they have less time than they they had before. Oh, let me get some stitching on this here. And by stitching, I mean actual stitching, not my fake texture stitching. 
Well, tons of projects going on is always the best way to go because even the project that you love the most, that you're just the most excited about, after a certain time, it just reaches that, I don't even want to look at these anymore. I know I've got to go more to my, my sisters and my Osiarx. Those are going to be some more tutorial series that I want to film. Like, yeah, my sister's here. So this is a, this is a color test figure. And Cosplaying Kitten remembers this, the old army, really well. Because if you go to the blog, you will see her cosplaying sisters in front of that army. I'll focus in on lizards, which, uh, was it, Seraphon now is what they call them? I, I think I still have some of the big critters. I still have one of my scratch sculpted stegodons. But yeah, I've gotta I gotta get back into some lizards too. And paint them with oils. I've gotta paint some lizards with oils. And give them jungle bases. So jungle bases, where'd they go? Uh they're over here. So I just filmed this video. This was uh actually for the Patreon page here, but Vellum plants. What are these? The Untamed Beasts, right? Got themselves a nice little jungle theme. Where's the other one? There we go. Look at that. So Vellum Plants by Wicked Elf. I really love those things. Yep, you were there in front of the... Uh, I think it was called Sister Approved. That was the name of the blog post. And yeah, they, you were there with the right in front of the cathedral there and at the old Adepticon Hotel, which I still like better than the new facility. I loved the old place. And I still have the chapel. The Sisters Army, well, that I ended up having to sell that off, but now there's new sisters. And we're redoing that army. So we're going to do a different sort of texture on here. So we've got turquoise, orange, and then we're sort of reflecting the, the skin color there. Let's get a little more, if I can, some lighter tones on that skin. We're going to do a bit of a glaze there. That's a little better. This uh, right here, that almost needs to be more in shadow. So, uh, some green in that skin tone. There we go. It's not enough to just have it be a shadow, but also the color of the robe. So, yeah, we're knocking that down. It just needed to be, as much as I like to have the brighter skin there. Speaking of... Reflected light, we're doing that here. Some nifty reflected light. What was a shadow color in one place is reflected light in another. That tells you that you've got your your lights and darks positioned pretty well. Speaking of which, we've got to do some more mid-tones here. Remember, mid-tones, they do all the work, all the real heavy lifting, but they just never get credit for anything. Let's get the rest of the neck here. Some of this might be hard to see. I, I apologize for that, but I just have to get to it. <laughs> oh, it's not the most fun thing to watch me paint things. You can't even see the brush reach, but otherwise... Other things don't make much sense. And again, got to think about where some of these other things are going to cast a shadow down onto that. Some more reflected light. Maybe even... Yeah, I was kind of trying to get a little more of the, the stuff that's going on in the corner of her mouth there. 
Well, I may even just try a little bit of lighter, lighter color here on the edges of my dagger. Yeah, see a little, look at that, just one spot. That's all it took. Sometimes less is more, and sometimes more is less. And it can be that way with weathering, with chipping, with streaking, and with highlights. Too much highlights can be too much highlights. Let's get a bit of a I'm gonna see if I can't. Speaking of reflected light here, I'm gonna try and do something on the lips. If it's possible, it may not be. I may just not like it and paint back over it again. But so on the underside here of the lips, I'm gonna try and make those uh make those lighter if it's possible. No, that's gonna be too cold of a color. Let's get that a little warmer. Okay, it was too cold of a pink. That's more of a reddish orange there. That's better. And then I can go back over the top of it and maybe knock that down a little bit. Sometimes it's just easier to do it that way. We'll go back the other way once more. And that takes care of it. So now we've got the same sort of thing. Thinking about reflected light. Some more pink into the hands here. Basically just indicating that there's blood vessels right there, like this. <laughs> So I'm trying to do the same thing on here. And I might even throw a couple of hints of pink right there on her dagger. This also, I'm going to make that a little lighter in here. Only, only so much, because if I go too far with that, Oh, what's the... Yeah, doing too much light there. What's, the, what's on top of it now is going to look flat. It's not going to... This is going to try and almost come forward when it should be the thing that's furthest in the background. It's always something to think about. When you're working on elements like this that are just have other stuff in the way. And I'm going to try and get some something here. I think we're going to maybe go towards towards the green on this right thereabouts. There we go. So uh, just a bit of a mid, nope. I'm going to go for this yellow over here. And there we go. What else? What else? Ah, this too. We got some texture. Any other texture? Ah, let's uh, take some of this. And it's one more color. We got only the same sort of three, four colors here. I'm just going to play with something else. Let's give me some one other type of texture here. And I've got these kind of holes here in the cloth, so we'll maybe play with those a little bit here. Give them a bit of an edge highlight. Oh, Ford, how's it going? Well, thanks very much. Uh, we've been working on this up. Uh, a little over two hours, and as always, it started from nothing, just primer. Oh, it's Zen for one. How you doing? 
it's, it's I've been having a lot of fun here the last couple of days painting some busts and now that this one's reaching a certain stage here I think that same stipple that same lighter stuff over here and we're just gonna grab mr. Krabby over here so we have yeah, we've been it's uh, sort of been like bust week the last uh, few days here so this was a stream from a few days ago and this is today's we've been having fun with this I would like basically never get a chance to paint bust so no time like the present also going it there we go try and hit it with a touch of that lighter green let's hit some of the stitching some of the stitching here it's a little boy that it's it's very random that's for sure which way that stitching goes I got my darker colors over here still let's let's do some glazing back the other way uh, work ended bad, but it's okay now. I'm oh, sorry about that. I'm going to get more dark over here. Even think about... That was... Uh, when I did that little... Just that one little dark spot there and the other little light spot, that really made all the difference on that sword speaking of dark stuff we've been adding lighter stuff we're going to go back to some more dark patterns here just to get these there's an area here that needed maybe a little bit of the stippling this is kind of a dark grayish green and let's do this Now this, geez, do I want to also do texture there? Eh, let, let's do some over here first, and we'll see see if we like the extra texture over here. Because if we don't, we can always just knock it back down again. Yeah, this is uh, this is the other wapple here. I, I know this it's been really weird that I've been doing like human normal human hour the streams instead of uh, the the vampire lord streams in the middle of the night quite literally in the middle of the night because let's see it's 7 14 good grief i practically got to sleep at this time this morning yeah there's there has not been much sleep at all in the last week whatsoever between filming episodes and doing these things my goodness there's been a lot lot going on aha uh -huh. I will get some of this orange over here too and maybe even in on this cloak it's Goober Town it's Goober Town oh I, I saw the the latest video that you did there the uh oh gosh was it my great my greatest new discovery i think or newest game changing discovery so that was very cool to see that i hope that uh, you've been okay and cat's okay and you can just kind of keep filming those uh, fabulous youtube videos so those not familiar with the goober town channel you gotta go check that out if you want mellow things if you want stuff that's nice and chill and has lots of cool miniatures and other fun miniature stuff that is a channel to go check out when you want something mellow to kind of ease the stress of the day that is a good place to go And see, well, it's a lots of fun miniature painting things. I, I remember your in June the whole can I make my own contrast paint? So that was a very fun video. Oh, thanks for it. Appreciate it. 
uh, we, we're starting to think that, say, Mondays might be kind of my daytime day because that's the one day that Kathy doesn't do her stream during the week. So we're sort of maybe targeting that. Now, this sort of where I stream after Kathy does, it could be, well, it depends on certain scheduling things. I might try and do more of these where she finishes and passes off the bandwidth to me. Oh, yeah, fun colors, safe, all safe and sound. That's good. Staying inside and painting. And Orthober Studio asks, do you sleep? See on Twitch before I even get up. Uh, we're, we're calling this uh, Wapolo clock in the morning, basically, is when those streams happen. So, yeah, I'll show you. I'll bring it up again. So this, a little over, I don't know, 13 hours ago, I tried to go to bed after painting this for about three and a half hours. And this, look at, there's some like nine skeletons here just emerging out of the ground. Yep, sl well, sleep is for the dead, so says uh, Imhotopper, whoever this guy is. But yeah, this was just white primer, and in three and a half hours, we... There, let's we'll hold him this way, and we can get him on the screen. Ah, so Mondays are good. Yeah, now, uh, Kathy's D&D &D thing, once that gets going again, that'll be on Monday evening, so I'll probably start a little bit my God, heaven forbid, something like 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon instead of in the morning. I won't know what to do with myself. I mean, what is this? I, I still do not comprehend what that bright object is in the sky and why it's there. Well, just like we did with this, to, to do the cloak, there was one point I was, see that on my finger there? We were actually just paint with my finger. Because, I mean, why not? You got fingers. Yeah, we got brushes too, but there's uh, nothing quite like a little bit of finger painting. I mean, it was really fun when we were kids. Why abandon all of your childhood so recklessly? Aha, uh -huh. this is another thing that we need here. So if, if we're going to do this moonlight effect, which was never really the original plan, but just kind of became the plan, like out of nowhere, suddenly said, like, I'm the new plan. I want to get a little bit of that along the edge here, and that should make the hair a bit more. Even though we've lightened up the hair, that's, that works. Uh, what about on this side? We shall do some similar things over here. Yeah, like some of the paint, I could not even wipe the paint off of my hand from that last stream. It was still there. Because, well, I'm out of gloves. Those ran out. And, and much like, well, paper products and club soda and other things, people just felt the need that they had to have all of them. And kind of leave none for the rest of us, so we're going to be going glove-free from now on. And believe it or not, I think the camera actually likes it better anyways. It's either that or because I manually set the white balance, maybe that's the difference. Yeah, so some more. Yeah, we got all kinds of fun little textury things going on here. We got some of that here. See, there's some magentas. There's some greens in there. Very fun. Now, I, I'm going to look and see, did I try and do some texture thing on some of the, uh, oh, no, I did the mud spatters. Right, let's get closer. See, I didn't, oh, I, knew, I did do some little texture things on there. So you can see on the on their cloaks and their tunics and stuff, I did do a little bit of texture things. Not as much, but you see I got mud spatter there. But see those little dots, texturing. Oh, you can't see my cursor. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I keep thinking I'm using XSplit, and you can see my whiteboard thing where I can actually draw on the screen. 
but yeah, it's at some point I'll I'll see if I can. Well, obviously, folks can maybe just send me private messages and ask about arranging some kind of one-on-one -on -one session. Because I mean, hey, this is this is not just my filming station. This is where I also paint every day. So, what's the difference between just turning the camera on and doing a hangout and doing some painting together I'm gonna get if I can't aha that's it I must do a little bit more of that on the other eye if I can right here below her eye boom right there now, if that gets too bright, then it starts to look a little wacky. The, the rest of the cheek gets flattened out if I do that too much. So, got to be careful. I think now we've got a bit of expression on the face. Like you do. Oh, let's get some... More skin colored fingernails on her here. Speaking of which, let's finish off that part of the hand. And a lot of these skin tones, they're still some of the original skin tones that we put on here when we just let all this stuff blend together. Aha, uh -huh. I'm going to put some texture over here. I will do something like this ever so slightly like that might do for the heck of it I'm going to throw some uh, turquoise into that and pop a little more yeah here I may not do actually I might just go Look, we got darker colors here. We've got the transparent brown. We even got some of the purple here. We'll throw all those together. And then we're gonna we're gonna throw some texture on the inside. Well, let's just have it be darker. Let's just have it be darker. It's gonna enhance the shadow area there for one thing. Killing two birds with one stone. We're getting some shading and we're getting some texture all at the same time with the same set of brush strokes. It's optimizing every last one of these brush strokes because every single one of them takes time. You might as well make each of them have value. Ooh, now that's a potentially, not, how do we turn that into a t-shirt phrase? We gotta make a catchy phrase out of that. You, somebody, you gotta have every brush stroke has to have value. Every brush stroke takes time, therefore it must have value. Hmm. It's a longer phrase, but then so is ask not what you can do for your oils, but what your oils can do for you. Except, uh, <laughs> now I don't have any conventions to give out the stickers at. I already have two sets of stickers, well, three technically. Ah, this this is good. Yeah, see, just uh, kind of absentmindedly started uh, reinforcing this shadow area down here by doing my texture. And then I realized, oh yeah, I'm reinforcing a shadow that needs reinforcement. What do you know? Speaking of which, I might take a little bit of this. And I'm going to go into this shadow area because, yeah, we have the greens in there. That's neat. But since texture seems to be the theme here, we sort of swapped out blood effects for texture. 